Hi, welcome back. Wow, what a day we had yesterday. Oh my goodness, the 10th of December. Um, Mama had talked to Papa on the phone. Papa had said, go find the key. Look and see what you can find in that secret box of Joya Kim's. And so when Joya Kim came home, the box had been opened, the papers had been discovered, and we know, wow, Joy Kim got mad. He yelled, he ran to his room, he slammed the door as hard as he could, it said, and um, everything was spoiled. The advent calendar had suddenly become ordinary, like every other advent calendar. It wasn't the least bit magical anymore. Yeah, he wasn't happy. And then those words, sabat, tabas, sabet, tabas, sabet, tabas, and all of that. And at the end of the chapter, there's a knock on the door. Papa comes in. It's true, we've been silly. And Mama asks, can you forgive us? But they also say, Joya Kim, we have the papers. We read them, but we don't know what order they're in. Can you help us with that? And he consents. From now on, the magic advent calendar, calendar would belong to the whole family. And you know, that's good. Keeping secrets is really hard. And sometimes it's easier to go through life with others. All right, so the 11th of December, we're going to see what happens. So here we are. The picture that Joy Akim is going to see looks like a knight in armor. And it's the 11th of December. Let's read and find out where things have gotten today. <clears throat> what is the phrase? Many people are terribly frightened when they see one of the angels of the Lord. Mmm, yeah. <clears throat> Shepherds sure were. The rest of the afternoon was spent pouring over the scraps of paper that had fallen out of the magic advent calendar one day after the other. Joy Kim had tried to put them in the right order so that Mama and Papa could read the story. As they read, Papa said, that's the strangest thing I've ever seen. We must find out more about this. I wonder how many calendars like this were made. And Mama kept saying, I've never seen anything like it. Imagine bringing home this advent calendar, Joya Kim. When it was evening and Joya Kim had to go to bed, he sat up for a long time, staring at the calendar. Then it happened again. It happened again! On the big calendar picture were painted many angels floating down from the sky. Joya Kim had seen that before. But only today did he discover that one of the angels in the picture was a cherub. He was quite sure. Imperial the cherub had not been in the picture until Joachim had read that he flew in the spirals down from the tall church tower. Mama! He shouted, Papa! Both of them came rushing into his room. They were obviously afraid that something dreadful had happened to him. He was a bit shocked himself. I can see the angel imperial, was all he said. Mama and Papa turned to go back. Perhaps they thought he, was, he had seen, been visited by an angel, but Joy Kim asked them to look at the picture carefully. Can you see anything you haven't seen before, he asked. They leaned over the picture. Papa said he might not have noticed everything when the bookseller gave them the calendar. He had been so flustered that he had left his driving license on the counter. For instance, he hadn't noticed that one of the shepherds was holding a shepherd's crook in his hand. I don't think I had noticed the little angel either, remarked Mama. Of course not, said Joy Kim, because he hasn't been there till now and that's because it's a magic advent calendar now then we mustn't exaggerate objected papa he always liked to seem sensible 
The last thing Joachim thought before he fell asleep was that one of the angels in heaven was called Joachim, almost the same as himself. The next morning, Joachim opened the 11th door in the advent calendar. He had to coax the piece of paper out before he discovered a picture of a horse and rider. He made himself comfortable under the duvet and read what was on the sheet of paper. Today, he had no need to be afraid that Mama or Papa would catch him red-handed because the secret pieces of paper in the calendar were not secret anymore. Belfazer. Ah, we get another king today. Five sheep, two shepherds, two angels, one king of the Orient, and a little girl from Norway were speeding up the valley of the Rhine, 1199 years after Jesus was born. They could just glimpse a church tower on the other side of the river. Ethereal told them it was Maine's Cathedral. We have to cross the river, said Joshua. It's a pity because we shall have to frighten another poor ferryman and explain that we're pilgrims on our way to the Holy Land. Ah, we shall have to try and do it gently, said Ethereal. I can see a boat down there, exclaimed Imperial. He flew high in the air, beating his short little wings in the direction of the boat, with the rest of the procession after him, and started talking to a man who was sitting on the river bank. Can you row us across? We're going all the way to Bethlehem, and we don't have much time if we're going to get there before Jesus is born. We're on a godly errand, you see, so we're not just anybody. Ha! Huh. Ethereal hurried after him. When he had caught up with Imperial, he nodded apologetically at the ferryman and said to Imperial, How many times do I have to remind you that first of all you must say, Fear not? But the ferryman, who was unusually and splendidly dressed in a long red cloak, was not scared by the cherub. He turned to Ethereal and said, My name is Belthazar, second wise man and king of Sheba. I'm going the same way as you. Ah, then you are one of us, said Ethereal. All the same, he had to give Imperial a little scolding. This time, things fortunately turned out well. But you must always start by saying, fear not. Don't you realize that many people are terribly frightened when they see one of the angels of the Lord? At any rate, when we beat our wings. Sorry, said Imperial. All right, all right, replied Ethereal. But isn't it odd that they should be so frightened just because they've seen an angel? argued Imperial. I've never so much as harmed a cat. In fact, I couldn't count all the times I've helped a poor cat down from a tall tree. Of course, the cats ought to learn once and for all not to climb into high, not to climb too high up into trees. But when we, when we do come and help them, they're not in the slightest bit afraid of us. It's always humans who are so terribly nervous. The two wise men had embraced each other. It's been a long time, friend, said the one. And it was a very, very long way from the Rhine, answered the other. But it's very, very, very pleasant to see you again. They had their arms round each other, so it was not easy to say who had said what. But now the whole of the pilgrim's procession went on board the boat. The kings of Orient each took an oar and rowed across the river, which was almost as wide as a stretch of the ocean. On the other side, Ethereal pointed up at the beautiful cathedral. It seemed a little dumpy 
and hadn't such a tall tower as many of the other churches they had passed, but it was much older. The year is 1186 after Christ. Work on this cathedral began more than 200 years ago. At that time, almost a thousand years had passed since the one seed was sown in the earth so that a field of churches and cathedrals should grow over the whole world. A whole field of churches, repeated Imperial. It would be fun to work out how many kilos of stone and timber had been used to celebrate Jesus' birth, not to mention how many cakes had been baked or how many parcels had been packed. Christmas is the world's biggest birthday party for everybody in the whole world is invited to join. That's why the party has lasted for so many years. Wow, Imperial says a lot. Joshua struck the ground with his crook and said, To Bethlehem, to Bethlehem. The pilgrims hurried along the west bank of the Rhine. It was early in the morning so that very few people would be scared when, in the course of a short second or two, they saw five sheep, two shepherds, two kings of Orient, two angels of the Lord, and a little girl dressed in clothes very different from those they were used to in the Middle Ages. When they tumbled into the town of Worms in the year of our Lord, 1162, they met a rider on horseback, a soldier who had been out on night duty, perhaps. The angel imperial flew over to the man, buzzed around him like an excited bumblebee and repeated, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Oh, <laughs> well, he is doing what um, he was told. The poor man was extremely scared. He spurred on his horse and galloped away around some low buildings. He didn't even have time to say, Alleluia, or God be praised. You only need to say it once, ethereal chided imperial, but you must say it in a gentle, soft, heavenly voice. Fear not, you must say. It's a good idea to keep your arms down too, to show you're not carrying a weapon. Belfazzar the wise man pointed up at the cathedral with six towers. Everywhere and at all times, people have stretched their arms out to God, he said. The church towers point up to heaven too, but they last much longer. The shepherds bent their heads respectfully at these wise words, and Elizabeth felt she had to repeat them to herself before she was quite certain what he meant. Joshua then said, To Bethlehem, to Bethlehem. In the city of Basil, on the southern bank of the Rhine, they stopped in front of another big cathedral, the time tells us that 1119 years have passed since the Christ child was born, announced Ethereal. This cathedral with five naves was just celebrated its centenary. So that means this church was um, 100 years old. But for hundreds of years, Basil has been an important crosswords for travelers who have journeyed through the Alps between Italy and Northern Europe. We are going to follow the same route over the St. Bernard Pass. To Bethlehem, said Joshua the shepherd, striking his crook on the ground. To Bethlehem. Whereupon they set off upwards through the Swiss mountains. I should let you know, every time the story ends, we get these three pictures. So that tells me the story has ended and we're going back to Joachim's story. Joachim sat in bed thinking 
about the strange pilgrimage to Bethlehem. After a while, his mother and father came in to read what was on the piece of paper. We took home a small miracle from the bookshop, didn't we, Joya Kim? said Papa. Can you imagine how it was made? I think John made it, said Joya Kim. The bookseller said something about someone called John, didn't he? Joya Kim wondered whether he ought to tell Mama and Papa that he had met John, but he didn't. He had to keep one little secret for himself because... There was something else as well. Sabat to Bess, Sabat to Bess. If this calendar was made by a flower seller, said Papa, he's certainly inventive. Mama agreed. Yes, he has plenty of imagination. You said I had a lot of imagination when I told you about Elizabeth and Ethereal, said Joya Kim but I'd only read all the scraps of paper in the advent calendar. <laughs> and now we're saying that the person who made the advent calendar has a lot of imagination, said Mama. In a way, it's the same. Joy Kim shook his head. He may not have so much imagination if the whole story is true. At this, Papa laughed. You surely don't think you really can run all the way to Bethlehem and far back in time as well. Nothing is impossible for God, said Joya Kim. Nobody protested that. Papa thought they ought to get hold of a large atlas so that they could follow Elizabeth's journey on the map. He had a historical atlas too, a book of maps that showed what all the countries and all the places were called in the olden days. The same country and the same town have often had many different names, he explained. Suddenly, Mama gave a gasp. Do you remember that old story from way back? She said to Papa. There really was a little girl who disappeared from this very town while she and her mother were out doing their Christmas shopping. I think her name was called Elizabeth. Papa nodded. Oh, it was some time after the war. Was she called Elizabeth? I'm thinking so, said Mama, but I'm not sure. Suddenly, it was as if Mama and Papa had forgotten Joya Kim. They were so busy talking to each other. So, maybe he's remembered that old story and made up the rest himself, suggested Papa, if it is this flower seller who's made it. Can you find out whether she was called Elizabeth? asked Joya Kim. Yes, I, I should think so, replied Papa. Not that it really matters what she was called. The last person to say anything before they had to hurry to eat breakfast was Joya Kim. I think it matters a lot, he said, because the lady in the photo was also called Elizabeth. Wow. This is cool. So tomorrow, maybe we can find out, does Papa find out who that girl was? And we'll find, maybe we'll find out if Mama was right, like, Maybe there's some newspaper clippings. Uh, maybe other people know about this girl. And maybe they can put some things together. All right. You have to come back tomorrow if we're going to find out. We'll see you then. Have an awesome day and an awesome tomorrow until we meet again. Bye, y'all.